In this lecture, we're going to look at voltaic cells and electrolytic cells and see what things they have in common and what their differences are. It would be good to see this after you have gotten a familiarity with voltaic cells. So having that under your belt, let's move on to looking at electrolytic cells and how they're different with voltaic cells. Let's start by examining a voltaic cell. I advise when learning how to do cells to take a cell like this and just annotate it. So mark off what terminal is positive, what's negative, label the cathode and anode, show the flow of electrons through the cell, the flow of ions within the cell, uh, and that'll help you to understand the electrochemistry. So if we look at the copper, the reduction potential for copper is going to be 0 0.34 volts. And the standard reduction potential for silver is equal to 0.8 volts. So we can see that if we have a voltaic cell, that's a cell that just runs of its own accord. The forward reaction is spontaneous. It's going to be, uh, given that we're at one molar concentrations for both our ions, the standard cell potential is the potential. And so uh, we can see the potential, the standard potential for the cell for the overall cell, I'll write that down here, E cell is going to be equal to 0.46 volts. So that's the standard cell potential, but because we're under standard conditions, Q is equal to one and E cell and E standard are the same. So we're at 0.6 volts. So this is a, this is a cell that will just run of its own accord. It's gonna run in the direction where we're going to have our cathode be the thing with the higher cell potential, reduction potential, so we're going to have, we can write this down as a reaction, we're going to have uh, silver is going to be reduced. And our copper is going to be oxidized. Okay, so we can see that since silver is being reduced, this is the cathode side, and since copper is being oxidized, this is the anode side. So let's go ahead and label this as the anode. Label this as the cathode. And let's emphasize that we're talking here about a voltaic cell. So this is one where the chemistry, the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. And so we're able to push electrons with that energy that's being given off by the reaction. So we can see that We've got silver ions, and those are going to be plated onto here to form solid silver. You can imagine just sort of showing that coating of silver beginning to grow on there. And then our copper is coming off into form copper ions. We might want to show that by showing our electrode. Since this is not an inert electrode, right, the copper is actually part of the reaction. It's reactant. So the copper metal is going to be eaten up. Okay, so this we're eroding this electrode. All right, so we should show the flow of electrons. Well, if we think about this, this reaction on the cathode side, this reduction reaction, electrons are a reactant. And so those electrons have to come from somewhere, right? Because we have electrons meeting up with silver ions to form silver metal. And those electrons come through the wire. So we'll show electrons flowing through this wire here. And what's the source of those electrons? Well, over here, copper is losing two electrons, right? So copper metal is going from copper zero to copper two by giving off two electrons. And those electrons then flow up through this wire. Okay, so we've annotated the diagram to show the flow of electrons going to the left through the wire. Well, we have to complete the circuit. So we need a flow of negative charge back to the other beaker through the salt bridge. So we can show that, I'll just draw another nitrate here and show that nitrate coming off this salt bridge into the solution. And notice what that's doing. That's providing electro neutrality. So for every copper ion that forms over here at the anode, we're gonna need two of these nitrates to come down here. So this solution remains electrically balanced. And we can see a similar thing happening with the potassium ions. If negative charge is flowing this way to the right through that salt bridge, we can see that positive charge will flow the other direction. So potassiums are going to come off this end of the salt bridge 
and they're going to electrically balance the silver that is being lost, right? Because we know the solution is there's got to be some counter ion to the silver. So this might be a silver nitrate solution. And so we're losing cations in the form of silver ions because they're plating out as silver metal. And so we're replenishing our supply of cations with our potassium, which we better mark with a positive charge there. Okay, so we can see how uh, you can think of a salt bridge as completing the circuit. So it's completing that flow of negative charge in this counterclockwise direction. Or we can think of it as maintaining electroneutrality on in each of our two beakers. Great. So we've shown the flow of ions. We've shown the flow of electrons through the wire. We've labeled our cathode and anode. The only thing that remains is to show the uh, relative potential uh, th that is the sign of our two electrodes. And when you do this, the way to do this, you don't have to memorize it. You can just use logic to think about this. What are you doing at your cathode over here? Your silvers are coming and they are um, taking electrons away. They're pulling electrons away. And we can look at our copper over here. What's doing? it's doing over here is these ions are going off into solution and we're leaving behind their electrons. So each copper atom that goes into solution and becomes a copper ion is leaving behind two electrons. We're piling up electrons on here. So we know this is gonna make this have a negative charge. This, electro this electrode will be negatively charged. And over here, the silver atoms are pulling electrons off as they plate. So electrons are going into this reaction and being used up. So we're taking away electrons. So this electrode will have a positive charge. And notice what that means. This electrode is negatively charged. This is positively charged. It's going to be favorable for electrons to move by the easiest path available to them from here on the right to over here on the left, from the anode to the cathode. So what do they do? They flow metaphorically downhill from this negative electrode over to this positive electrode. Okay, so it all makes sense. So whenever you annotate one of these diagrams, make sure that everything that you do is logically consistent. All right, so that's our discussion of a voltaic cell. Let's see that, how that differs from an electrolytic cell. All right, now let's look at an electrolytic cell. And for our example, we're gonna take exactly the same cell. We're just gonna run it as an electrolytic cell rather than a voltaic cell. An electrolytic cell, we're gonna take a reaction that's not spontaneous. And you're gonna run it backwards. You're gonna force it to be, you're gonna run it backwards from the direction that it would go spontaneous. You're gonna force a non-spontaneous reaction to happen. Now, how do you do that? If we go back just one second to our diagram we just did, we saw that electrons would spontaneously flow from the copper through that wire over to the silver, and the silver would be the cathode and the copper would be the anode. What we're gonna do is imagine how could we stop that flow from happening? So what we're gonna do is we're going to not just have a wire connecting these and allow electrons to flow through there freely. We're going to put in some sort of voltage source. And I'll just mark it with the giant V to say that it's a voltage source. So it could be, um, it could be a battery, for instance. Okay, so something that is going to apply a voltage. So we could plug a battery in here, a powerful battery. So it has to be more powerful than the existing cell. So before we saw there was a tendency for electrons to flow to the left through that wire, and that tendency was given by the voltage. We said that the voltage was for the cell was around 0.46 volts. So what would happen if we put a voltage source in here, and that voltage source might be a battery, and we put it, so we're trying to push the electrons back. So we could push electrons back towards the copper by putting in a battery that had a negative terminal on the right and a positive terminal on the left. And so if we put enough of a potential difference here, it's going to be able to push electrons back in the opposite direction. So we knew that this reaction, as we had it drawn before, where we had uh, one molar copper ions on the uh, right-hand side and one molar silver ions on the left, 
that that would have a tendency for electrons to flow with a potential of 0.6 volts. So if we put anything bigger than 0.6 in our battery, it's going to push electrons back the opposite way. In other words, what's going to be in charge is our voltage source, not the chemistry. So we'll be able to push the chemistry around. So we're going to push these electrons to the right. So we'll start by showing the flow of electrons. Okay, so this is the first thing that's going to be different between our electrolytic cell and our voltaic cells. We're reversing the flow of electrons. And once we do that, everything's going to flow from there. So this time, what's going to happen is we're going to be pushing all these electrons onto the electrons. You can imagine them sort of piling up inside this electrode, at least at first. So we're going to have a negative charge because we're pumping electrons into it. And we're going to have a positive charge over here because we're pulling electrons out of that electrode. So far, so good. Now we have to think about what that's going to do for our two half reactions. So we have to imagine the half reaction of reduction of copper 2 to form copper and the reduction of silver to form silver metal. Okay, so we had copper 2 going to copper, silver 1 going to silver. How are those reactions affected by putting in excess electrons? Well, if we throw in a bunch of electrons into this reaction, it's going to push it in this direction towards metallic copper. So it's going to favor this being reduced. If we come over here, we're pulling electrons out. That's going to push this reaction, the silver reduction reaction, back towards silver ions. So what can happen here is we're going to actually change what's reduced and what's oxidized. We're using this battery to rip electrons out of the silver electrode. And since we're doing that, we're going to end up creating silver ions. So the natural tendency of the reaction was for silver to be reduced and for copper to be oxide, oxidized. But we're, redu we're reversing that by using this applied voltage. So we're forcing the reaction to go in a direction that it wouldn't naturally go. So we're going to be now making silver ions. And as soon as you see that, you say, wait a minute. This time, what's happening? This is oxidation. This is the anode. So we're making the silver electrode the anode. So we have the cathode over here. So we're reducing copper. Okay, so that's plating on there. So the electrons go to the surface of the electrode. They meet up with copper ions to form metallic copper. So we can draw the copper plating on here. Okay, so we're going to plate copper this time instead of silver. And since we see that we're getting rid of positive ions, we need to replace them. So we'll show our potassium ions dissolving out of the salt bridge. We can see we're making silver ions at the anode, so we've got to counter their charges with nitrates. And if we did this right, we should be able to see that the flow of negative charge is making a loop. It's making a circuit. Let's see. Up to the wire, we're going clockwise. And then we come over to the salt bridge. In the salt bridge, what's happening? If we look at the nitrates, they're going also clockwise. So we've got electrons on top, nitrates on the bottom. And between them, we form this clockwise circuit. Okay, of course, the positive ions are going the opposite direction from the negative ions. Okay, so we have a complete flow. We have a circuit. We've labeled the cathode and the anode. We've labeled the charge. And uh, now it's time to look at some differences and similarities. The first is that the cathode is always the location where reduction takes place. Okay, so cathode is always going to be reduction. And the anode is always the location where oxidation takes place. So that part is the same for both cells. But there is something different. Let's look at our anode. Our anode in this electrolytic cell is positive. If we go back to our voltaic cell, our anode is going to be have a negative charge. So notice uh, we changed 
whether the cathode, the anode was cop was copper or silver when we went from voltaic. So so in a voltaic cell, the metal with the more positive reduction potential is the one that's being reduced, and the the metal with the less positive reduction potential is being oxidized. And in that it that gives you a spontaneous reaction. In a vol in an electrolytic cell, it's the opposite. We're we're forcing this metal that normally would be the one to be uh, oxidized to be reduced, and then we're we're oxidizing something that normally wouldn't be oxidized. So we're going in the opposite direction, but the the difference in labeling is the charge. Notice the charge is different, and we didn't have to we didn't have to uh, memorize that. We can see why. What's happening here? We're using a voltage source to pump electrons, and we're ripping electrons off of that electrode, and that's what's going to lead to this silver being oxidized because we're pulling electrons out and the positive ions go off into solution. So when you're contrasting voltaic cells and electrolytic cells, to keep them straight, all you have to do is keep in mind who's in charge. So an electrolytic cell, an externally applied voltage, is forcing reactions to go and forcing the flow of electrons. Whereas in a voltaic cell, it's the chemistry of the reaction, the overall reaction that's in charge. And so we have at the cathode, the uh, the chemical that's being reduced is going to pull electrons off of this. Uh, in this case, they're pulling it off the main body of the electrode into this area where they're being plated. And at the anode, we have the thing being oxidized, just leaving its electrons behind, basically dumping electrons on here. And that's forcing the flow of electrons. So notice that in voltaic cells, we force the flow of electrons with our chemistry. And in an electrolytic cell, we force the chemistry with the flow of electrons. So we can think of them as opposites. And notice that the only label that changes size, the changes is the sign of the electrodes.